Commission meeting to order, uh, our first meeting since we took our little break for COVID-19. If you'd stand with us, Commissioner Wilder will lead us in our invocation, and Commissioner uh, Futch will lead us in the pledge. And if you folks outside would like to face the flag in the park, that'd be outstanding. How about with me? Dear Lord, we want to thank you for a good day. We want to thank you for the current rain you had. Let's uh, hope it'll have a little break in that so the grass can now grow now that Thank you for all the many blessings you show on this country, this state. Oh, we ask you to look out for all the, the first responders, the medical care, dealing with this, this crazy time we're going through. Uh, we ask that you look over us tonight, guide our decisions. Let us look to you for the right thing that will stand. Best fit for us all. All these things. Thank you. If I could remind everyone when they come inside the auditorium to please silence their cell phones. Uh, we do have a uh, complete quorum tonight with all five commissioners present. Gentlemen, you've had an opportunity to read the minutes from our last meeting on March 5th. Uh, if there are no changes or amendments, I'd like a motion for approval. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Motion to approve the agenda or, uh, as submitted, or excuse me, the minutes as submitted, um, past 5-0. Gentlemen, you've also had a chance to review the agenda for this evening, as lengthy as it is. Uh, we're going to try to roll through this as much as we can. Are there any additional items or amendments uh, that you have uh, noticed or been given for the agenda for tonight? If not, I'd like a motion for approval. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the agenda. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Motion to approve the agenda as submitted passes 5-0. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to clarify that the Planning Commission is a recommending body to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. The decisions made on rezoning and variance requests tonight will be forwarded to the commissioners for final action on June 2nd, 2020 in these chambers at 6 p.m. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, please see Ms. Kara Harden. Kara, you raise your hand. Okay, she's over here on the far side. If anybody that's in the parking lot needs to see her, and she'll give you a request to uh, speak form for the commission meeting. We're less formal in these chambers, and we'll invite folks to come forward tonight. We'll give the applicants five minutes or a little bit to uh, make their presentations. And if you'd like to make comments either for or against, we're going to hold tight to a three-minute clock uh, because our agenda is so lengthy, but we would like to give everyone that uh, wants to speak an opportunity to speak. So if you'll just work with Ms. Garnowitz and her auxiliary people outside, they'll get you stacked up so we can move you in and out as quickly as possible and pe keep people as safely uh, safe as we can uh, in the proceedings tonight. Uh, that being said, I, uh, I do see one uh, candidate for uh, commission, I believe it's Don Skinner in District 2. Mr. Skinner, we appreciate you being here. Would you like to take a second to, to add anything to, to be admitted to our record? Yeah. We appreciate you being here. Uh, are there any other candidates for office that uh, are either inside or out in the, in, the, uh, in the audience outside tonight? Okay, if not, we'll go ahead and proceed with our agenda this evening. Uh, we do too have two items under unfinished business. Uh, Ms. Bolte, file RZ200209. All right. Sorry, getting adjusted with the microphone here. Uh, this first request was a rezoning request at 159 South Bell Air Road from uh, single family residential to professional. Uh, this request was tabled from the February 20th meeting. Have already seen this application. Um, the property is located on the west side of Bel Air Road, just north of Oak Road, currently zoned R2, single family residential. As are most of the properties around it, uh, there are a scattering of properties up and down Bel Air Road that are already zoned one professional. Uh, this is the aerial of the site. Uh, the existing house sits quite forward on the lot, uh, part of the subject of the Canyon Variance request with this application. The applicants did submit a, a very sketchy kind of site plan with this application on how they might lay the site out. Um, there are concerns from staff that this plan isn't possible. Um, 
that was the, the grounds for the, the staff recommendation on this item. We did hear from the applicant that they may not be wanting to move forward with this request, uh, not receive a verified uh, written request to withdraw this application. Um, this is in the neighborhood's character area on the future map on the Bel Air Road corridor. It is a professional corridor, so the use itself for an office is, is perfectly in keeping with this intent. Um, but there are concerns with the developability of the site for reasons of the current building. Examples of other P1 conversions in the area, uh, very different site layouts than what we see with the, the subject parcel. Staff was recommending disapproval. Gentlemen, any questions of staff? Is the applicant here this evening? Okay, is there anyone that'd like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to disapprove file RZ200209, rezoning request for the property 159 South Bell Air Road. Do we hear a second? Second. Okay. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor to disapprove? Motion to disapprove carries 5 0. Uh, we've got a companion variance we'll need to hear as well. Ms. Bolte, file VA200202. Yes, sir. This is the compa companion variance for 159 South Bel Air. Um, it's two setbacks and the buffers on the property. Um, again, for reuse of the building on the site. We've already seen the property, so I'm going to kind of quickly, but there's the, the aerial of the site. Uh, again, the building sits rather close to South Bel Air Road. Like most of the other buildings down there, it was built clients, but widening of the road, it does not meet the front setback requirements at this time. Apparently, I'm not talking loud enough, but I will work on that. Um, so again, with the site plan, um, they were requesting variances to the front setback and to the buffers for this property. Um, with the concerns on developing the site for a professional office, staff was recommending disapproval of this request as well. Okay, I'll ask again if the uh, applicant uh, has arrived. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against this particular variance? Seeing none, I'll close this public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Chairman, I make a motion to disapprove VA 20.002. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor to disapprove the variance? Variance is uh, disapproved by a vote of 5 to 0. Under new business, we've got a couple of staff reviews. Mr. Butler, file RZ 2.00501. I may want to draw on this, so I'm going to come up here. This is a request for a conditional use of 5113 Washington Road. It's kind of a unique request. Uh, with the rezoning in 2008, there's a requirement that the Planning Commission uh, would have to approve any kind of fast food restaurant. So because of that, you're seeing this as a conditional use for a fast food restaurant itself. Uh, again, it doesn't really go to the uh, Board of Commissioners after this, uh, so it's, it's le left to y'all. Again, I think Peter Patel. Uh, the next slide will show the location of the property on Washington Road, again, is part of part of, of Riverwood. Again, the zoning of it is a planning and development. Uh, again, you have across the street windmill plantation. And the area of the site, again, it's undeveloped. Also, the existing site itself and the plat of the property and also the site plan. Again, you see the uh, the, the drive-through at the, at the back of the property and then it wraps around on the left-hand side. Again, this does qualify as fast food. Uh, Seth re is recommending approval of the request for a fast food restaurant. This is not a public hearing. Gentlemen, do you have any questions of staff? Okay. Seeing none, we uh, need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Chairman, I make a motion to, move, uh, to approve file RZ200501. Do your second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Mr. Butler, file RZ200502. Then, sir, it's a request at 3104 William Fee Parkway. Again, fast food restaurant, just like we just saw before. Uh, these are actually both um, coffee places. Yeah, the first one was at Dunkin' Donuts, this is at Starbucks. Again, same request that's going before you. This location of the property on William Fee Parkway. Again, undeveloped parcel within Riverwood. Currently zone planning and development. And the location, or the area of the site, again, undeveloped. And the existing site itself from William Fee Parkway, the plat of the property. The site plan itself is actually in for review. Both are in for review at the moment uh, with plan review, but are having to wait for this process to go through. 
Uh, this application does include uh, elevations of the, of the actual building. Those aren't part of the, the, uh, the review here, but again, are provided to kind of give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. Uh, again, so it does recommend approval of the request. And you actually, you can ask questions of the applicant if you like. Is, uh, is this gonna be uh, similar to the one on Bobby Jones Expressway based on the applicant here? Yes, sir. Mr. and Chairman Cox, uh, it will, uh, it is not terribly similar to Bobby Jones. It's smaller. Uh, the exterior architecture has been tailored to adapt to the Riverwood theme. Um, it is a um, smaller footprint to fit the property. Bobby Jones is uh, unusually large. Right. Uh, and, uh, the exception to the norm for sure. Okay. Gentlemen, any other questions? That's more like the one in Grovetown there on the Horizon Park, uh, Horizon Park Southway or Southway. Parkway. Correct. It won't have any other tenants attached to it. It'll be a uh, single tenant building. And then the uh, exterior skins will be a mixture of antique brick, white mortar, and um, um, hardy board, uh, and then some green accents to okay. uh, tie into the same architectural theme as Publix and the other users. Not that there. size. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Great. All right. Any other questions? Jim, can we get his um, name? Would you give us your name and home? I'm sorry. I'm Dennis sorry. Trotter. Uh, 3638 Walton Way, Extension, Augusta, 30909. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If there are no more questions. Uh, this is not a public hearing. I need a motion to approve. Deny or to table. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve file RZ200502, conditional use for fast food restaurant in Riverwood. Clear your second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Ms. Neal, temporary use authorization extension. Yes, sir. This is a temporary use authorization extension request for 6087 Ridge Road on 1.09 acres, currently zoned R4 Recreational Residential. This shows the location of the site. The zoning of the site is currently R4. Shows the aerial of the site. The location of the camper. And this is the existing site. They're approximately 50% done with the construction of the single family home that they're putting on this property. Um, they've ran into some delays due to COVID-19 and are requesting a year extension. And they are aware that this is the last request they'll be able to receive for the temporary use authorization. And staff recommends approval. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? Okay, we need a motion to approve, deny or to table. Chairman, I make a motion to for use authorization. Do we, do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Ms. Bolte, temporary use authorization, tax map 20, parcel 34. Yes, sir. This is a request for a new temporary use authorization at 1258 Miles Road. Property is located um, off Miles Road, off County Line Road. It's currently zoned RA, residential agriculture. Um, the, this is the aerial of the site. Um, you can see the existing house towards the right-hand side of the property. The applicant is requesting permission to place a camper on the property uh, to care for his mother who owns the property. Um, she's beginning, she's broken her arm fairly recently and is having some, he, she needs a little more help on the site. Um, he is planning to move forward with options for more permanent residents on the property, whether that's an addition to the building or new home, um, and he is aware that he needs to be working on that uh, during this year temporary use authorization. Staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, any questions? If not, I'll need a motion to approve, deny or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the temporary use authorization for tax map 20 at 1, or 1258 Miles Road. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Ms. Bolte, conceptual plan for Coleman Acres. Yes, sir. This is a concept plan for a new development off Hinton Wilson Road. Um, it's 11 lots on 93 acres, currently zoned RA, residential agricultural. This is the location of the site. Um, Hinton Wilson Road is on the right. Um, and part of the property does touch uh, West Fieldstone Drive at the west end of the property. Um, this is a very narrow frontage. It is not wide enough for a, a new public or private road access. This is the aerial of the site, um, largely wooded and undeveloped. And the topography of the site, um, fairly steep slopes on the north side. 
Um, the plan is for 10 large acreage lots off of a new private gravel road. Um, they all do meet the five acre requirement. The 11th lot is at the kind of northwestern tip and has, it will be using that um, little bit of frontage on Westfield Stone Drive for access. Again, these are, are large lots. They are not on uh, county utilities. They will be on uh, private wells and septic systems. Um, the health department has been part of the review of this plan and has approved the, the concept. Staff is recommending approval. And this is not a public hearing. I need a motion to approve and hire to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve <clears throat> the conceptual plan for Coleman Acres on tax map 10, parcels 58, 59, and 116. Still here a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Ms. Bolte, preliminary plat for Misty Meadows. Yes, sir. This is the first preliminary plat um, for tonight for Misty Meadows, uh, located off High Meadows Drive, currently zoned planned residential. Uh, was approved last year in 2019. Um, the concept plan was approved with the zoning. This is 165 lots total. Located adjacent to Kalari, um, off William Q Parkway and High Meadows Drive. They are submitting the preliminary plat for all three phases of this development, although they have um, indicated the phase lines on the plans. And it is 165 lots with a minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet. Front setbacks are 50 feet from the center line of public roads, 35 feet from the center line of the private alleys. Side setbacks are seven and a half feet, and rear are 10 feet. They're all in line with the approved BRD zone. Uh, there are several public parks in the project that provide 7.43 acres of open space, an additional buffer and natural areas that provide an additional 22 and a half acres. Um, the project does include a road connection to Kalari that will be a constructed public road connection, as well as the right-of-way dedication for a future connection to Misty Road Drive, although this would not be a constructed road at this time. Staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? If not, I'll need a motion to approve and hire to table. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the plot for Misty Road Drive. Do your second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve. Misty Meadows passes 5-0. Ms. Bolte, this is our last preliminary plat uh, for Kalari, uh, Kalari 7, actually. Yes, sir. This is the preliminary plat for Kalari 7 off Baker Place Road. It is currently zoned uh, PDP. This is at the back of Kalari, um, part of a revision um, earlier this year. Um, was reviewed and approved by you and the Board of Commissioners. Preliminary plat as presented does follow the lot sizes for that revision. Um, the minimum lot size is 6,707 square feet, average lot size of 9,144 square feet. Uh, the setbacks for Kalari are 20 feet from the right of way, 5 feet on the side property lines, and 10 feet on the rear. Uh, there are 2.6 acres of open space in this section, and staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, any questions? If not, I need a motion to approve and hire to table. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the preliminary plat for Kalari 7. Do your second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve the final plat at Kalari 7 passes 5 0. And with that, gentlemen, we'll ask you to exit out the side door here. Give us just a minute to clear the room, ladies. All right, so we're, we're at the final plat. Uh, our first item is River Island Section 3. So, uh, Jennifer, do you like to, to bring our next phalanx of people in? Phalanx? Words. That dictionary down. Big words. I get to charge more for those at work. Why are you inadvertent? Operating that microphone? Okay. Pull it closer.
Next this to would be a perfect week. bathroom break, gents, if anybody needs one. We can continue on while they're working on collecting people out. Wait, do we need we wait for the full shift? Uh, do we probably need to wait till the, the people that are concerned with these particular We may have the people for the final plats, but Okay, let's go ahead. Uh Miss Bolte, final plat for River Island section three, phase two C three. Yes, sir. Um, this is the first final plat for this evening for River Island, um, located off Blackstone Camp Road. It is currently zoned PUD. Um, there are 23 lots in this final section. Um, this is the aerial of the site. It backs up to Blackstone Camp Road, although the access is, um, of course, internal to River Island. This is the final section for this plat. Um, the preliminary plat was approved back in 2014. Um, this section includes 23 lots with a minimum lot size of 7,200 square feet and an average lot size of 8,840 square feet. Um, this is the existing site. Um, sidewalks are to be provided on both sides of the road and staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, any questions? If not, we'll need a motion to approve and hire to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the final plat for River Island Section 3, Phase 2C3. So you're a second. Second. All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Ms. Bolte, final plat for Whispering Pines, Section 4 Alpha. Yes, sir. This is a final plat for Whispering Pines located off William Few Parkway. It is also a PUD. Um, there are 92 lots in this section on 52 acres. Um, this is the aerial of the site. Um, the access is off William Few. And the plat of the property, again, it is 92 lots. Um, the minimum lot size is 7,150 square feet with an average lot size of 7,585 square feet. Um, setbacks are a minimum of 25 feet from the right of way, seven and a half feet on the side property lines and 10 feet on the rear property lines. The sidewalks are provided on both sides of the road and 18.4 acres of open space is provided in this section. Uh, this is the existing site. Um, obviously, construction is not complete at this time. Um, this project is completely um, under the new requirements introduced in 2016, um, which means they can present the plat to you prior to construction being complete, but they will not be able to pull building permits for these lots until the, the construction is done. And staff is recommending approval. Would you define construction for us? That's going to include the, the water lines, sewer lines, stormwater facilities, and the roads themselves. So all of the infrastructure that needs to be deeded over to the county. All right. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? Does, so when you say that, when you say the roads, does that include the connection into Clanton? That is not part of this section. Mr. Lawrence, could you come up and, and ease the commissioner's nerves? They actually would have been there Monday, but the who, mix who are you? Where Keith are you Lawrence, uh, 211 Dixon Court, Evans, Georgia, 30809. Apologize for the casual attire. I forgot I was on the agenda today. Um, but that is actually, they were supposed to have started a while ago on that thing. We turned uh, Prater Construction loose in January. I know Matt's called them as well. Um, their mixer broke down on Friday, so they weren't able to mix the subgrade on Monday, but they expect to be there any time to have that done. It'll be done way before this project is ever paved. Okay. And so, just for understanding that, that what you're talking about is going to make the full connection all the way through to, to Clanton. Yes, sir. So, so by making it a condition of... I some, don't have any problem with it. Okay. That's all I want to know. And, and yep. the pool, pool has water in it already? Yep. We've gone through a preliminary with the health department. We have a final next week. Um, and then we'll basically... We got to figure out the opening system just like all the other public pools, but we're planning on opening it up. We just got to figure out a separate set of COVID-19 rules and regulations on that side. So assuming we pass, so I think it's the 29th, we'll open it up on that at that point. Great. Okay, gentlemen, any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, we've uh, asked our questions. We'll need a motion to approve, deny our table. And if you uh, make a motion to approve and have conditions that you would like to attach that, feel free. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the final plat for Whispering Pines 4A uh, with the condition that prior to uh, permits being drawn, that the road would be completed through to Clinton. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve with conditions passes 5-0. 
Miss Mystery, minor S1, file RZ200403. Thank you, sir. This is a minor revision for location 911 North Bel Air Road, seven acres, and is zoned is um, S1 special, which is an existing church. The, the minor revision is the addition of a pavilion. This is the location, and the zoning is S1. A close up of the aerial, and a photo of the site from Bel Air Road. Part of the property. This plan shows the, the green on the left, which is the playground, and the close up on the right shows the red box, which is the new pavilion, and that's what the minor revision is for. Staff recommends approval. Gentlemen, have any questions? If not, we'll meet in a, need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve RZ 200403. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Miss Mystery, architectural review for Maggie Jane Snowballs. Yes, sir. This is the location at 1963 Appling Harlem Road, 0.56 acres, and the current zoning is C1 Neighborhood Commercial. This is the, the zoning that's C1. And this is the plan of the building and the um, outside area. So the variances that were approved last year had a condition to say the Planning Commission approves the new construction. So today the request is to approve the new deck and uh, ramp, which is the covered deck, uh, which is what the public will use to um, order their snowballs. And the outdoor areas, the park um, area seating and um, uh, some places for games outside. And this is the uh, idea of what the character will be. Staff recommends approval. Gentlemen, any questions? Is the, the entire building a snowball stand? Or is it part of it going to be used for professional at some point? I mean, that's a pretty big no, snowball stand. No Both. service inside. It's all exterior. Yeah, they, uh, they just run so Will there be eventually another use for the building on the other side? Um, uh, they haven't indicated that. Any other questions? Okay. Need a motion to approve. Deny or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve architectural review for Maggie Jane Snowballs. Do hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? To approve, Paris, uh, carries 5 0. Mr. Butler, massage operator's license for Alicia Chong, DBA Jose? Massage. Dosa? Uh, this is a request for a, an, an MOL for Elisa Chong, a DBA, which is a massage in the spot, 4140 Evans Locks Road. Uh, she meets all the requirements of the ordinance um, and also offering mobile massage from this location. Uh, this was approved last year for a conditional use with a, with a uh, condition that required it to only be for, the, for that one business, associated with that business, so we can recommend approval of her license. Gentlemen, any questions? Okay, we'll need a motion to approve and hire to table. Mr. Chair, I uh, make a motion to approve the massage operator's license for Alicia Chong, DBA Osa Massage. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. And with that, gentlemen, we'll ask you to, I guess, clear the room unless you're here for one of the, uh, one of the public hearing items. You, you can actually go for the first two public hearings. Okay. Bever both of them on Beverly Road. You can keep going on okay. those two, and then we'll take a break. Awesome. All right, uh, Ms. Mystery, file RZ200302. This is the uh, rezoning, and the location is 413 Beverly Road, 0.47 acres, and the current zoning is C2 General Commercial. The request is a rezoning to C3 Heavy Commercial for a proposed HVAC office. This is the location on uh, Beverly Road and the zoning is C2, and you can see that just to the north is C3, and that was the similar rezoning by the same applicant last year. Close up of the site, it is, it is vacant, and a plot of the property. Photos of the existing site. This is a concept plan, but it, it is liable to change but once they combine all the parcels together. The future land use map um, says that it, it is an interstate activity center and similar as before um, it's proposed as HVAC offices and 
similar types of contractors offices. And staff recommends approval for rezoning to C3. Gentlemen, do you have any questions of staff? This is a public hearing. Is the applicant here? Do you have anything you'd like to add to uh, Ms. Mystery's presentation? All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Chairman, I'd like to move RZ20. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve passes 5 0. Ms. Mystery, we're still with you for the companion variance. Yes, sir. So this is very similar to what we did last year as well. It's a variance for the same property, zoning is C2. And it's a request for variance of um, lot and structure requirements and buffers. Um, this is the location map, uh, zoning, same as before. The aerial of the property. But uh, this is a street view. You can see that um, there's storage units uh, just on the adjacent site. Uh, same concept plan. So on here you can see where the um, existing storage units are to the, to the south side. So the code requirement is a 20-foot structural buffer, but the uh, variance is to reduce that to a 10-foot structural buffer to screen the yard. Um, and that will be um, offset by more landscaping on the front on Beverly Roadside uh, near the parking lot. So that would have a lot more um, uh, use and impact on the, on the streetscape by allowing for the variance. And um, go back to that one, it's okay. Um, and the setback variance as well is for um, side and rear setbacks, which is recommended to be, uh, code is 30, but um, we're reducing it to 10. And this is a side view, which is where the reduction, the buffer will be. So staff is recommending approval of the variance with the following conditions. The structural buffer requirement is reduced to 10 feet in width. The side and rear setbacks are reduced to 10 feet. Also, the applicant will work with a county landscape architect to include an area of landscaping along the frontage and parking lot area that meets the intent of the buffer code and creates a visually attractive streetscape to a distance of approximately 135 feet from the property line. The 10-foot structural buffer will be required for all areas requiring to be screened except adjacent to the storage building, which is marked on the illustration. Does that conclude the conditions? Yes, sir. Okay. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? I know the applicant's here. Do you have anything you'd like to add to this? All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against this particular variance? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve uh, file VA 203302 variances with conditions. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. And Ms. Neal, ready to continue the rock and roll show here? Okay, gentlemen, if we could get you to exit through the side door here. We're on the road, man. That's what I'm thinking. Bring in the next. Okay. Yeah, we need to have them. All in deck circle out there. Let's see what's next. Danielle, would you like to go ahead and at least do the presentation on the staff part while they're bringing folks in? Will that will that bother you? you need to have me in here first. Okay. I need a restroom break while we're 34. Get our bouncer over here so you better watch out. Oh. 0303 is the next one? Yeah, 0303 is the next one. Washington Road. Anybody watching the golf match Sunday? No, I was reading this. <laughs> Did you watch? Are you going to watch? I think I'm going to wait. 
I'm going to skip that and watch paint dry. Yeah, I don't know. Tiger Woods and Mickelson and Brady and and um, uh, Peyton Manning might be fun to watch. Watch it first. I'm the one race on. Yeah. May not have been watching. I understand they had pros playing in a tournament last weekend and crap. It was one birdie in the entire. Yeah. Game. Out of, out of practice. Miss Neal. Okay. All right. Green point. Wasn't it? Oh, four, oh, two. Item nine. All right, so Ms. Bolte, uh, file RZ200303. Yes, sir. This is a request for a major revision to the S1 zoning on a portion of the property at 6128 Washington Road. This parcel is located on the south side of Washington Road, um, out beyond Pollard's Corner, and is currently split zoned um, RA residential agriculture and S1 special. Um, the existing S1 was approved in 2009 um, for boat storage sheds, um, which have not been constructed. As you can see on the aerial, um, the existing residence on the left hand side, um, the S1 side of the property, part of it has been cleared, but there is uh, no construction currently on that side. This was the approved site plan um, from that rezoning. It does have a 2008 rezoning file, although it was approved January 2009. The applicant is requesting a revision to this S1 to utilize two acres of the site for a small sawmill operation. Um, this would use a portable bandsaw, which is basically able to be towed behind a truck. Um, it would have an area for storage of logs waiting to be cut, the actual sawmill operation, and then storage of the lumber for drying. Uh, the, operation, uh, the applicant proposed operating seven days a week between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Um, staff does have a condition to address this, asking that it only be six days a week. That would be Monday to Saturday. Uh, the remainder of the S1 portion of the property um, that is not being used for the sawmill is to remain wooded. There's no additional development or clearing proposed with this revision. Uh, and there are no additional buildings or site improvements with this request. This is the existing site from Washington Road. Um, as you saw with the, the overhead, um, the property does sit back off the road. It is in the rural character area on the future land use map, which is intended to provide for large lot scattered development. Um, it allows agriculture and forestry uses. Um, although a, a sawmill would typically be classified as an industrial use in our code, um, at a small scale, um, staff feels like this can be compatible with a rural area. Um, surrounding properties in this case are either owned by the applicant or are in use for timber production. Um, so there are very limited um, neighbors in this particular area to be impacted by the proposal. Staff is recommending approval with several conditions, um, the first of which limits the use to the two acres identified in the narrative um, as area A, with the remainder of the property to be retained in the natural wooded state, um, limiting the use to the one portable bandsaw specified in the narrative, um, the limit on the hours of operation, be Monday through Saturday with no operation on Sunday, and limiting the use to no more than 12 additional vehicle trips, um, under which is a requirement for home occupations. Um, this is still primarily a residential property, um, and staff felt that it was appropriate to limit the vehicle traffic in this location. That concludes the staff recommendation. Is the applicant here this evening? Yes, sir. If you'd like to come forward and give us any additional information, give us your name and home address. Melcher, uh, 6134 Washington Road, uh, Appling, Georgia, 30802. Okay. Is there anything additional you'd like to add to what uh, the staff gave us? Well, it's uh, basically just a small portable sawmill. Uh, we have a, an inert landfill in Hepzibah where we take trees and instead of burying them and wasting them, 
pecan trees, cherry trees, things like that. We can bring them back and cut them and make uh, furniture grade, hopefully furniture grade wood out of them. You know, and, and use, you know, use the material instead of bury it, you know, recycle it, basically. Banfield belongs to you? Yes, sir. Gentlemen? It's just a waste to throw away something like that. Have you, have you done this before? Or are you doing it now? No, I've done it before, a long time ago. You know, for, I've used, actually built a couple of sheds at my house with a friend of mine who has one. I mean, they're all over the place. You know, it's, it's not like a Pollard's Corner type of setup. It's a, it's a mill that probably from here to the wall, cradle with a bandsaw that just slices the logs. Why, why bring them from Hepzibah to Pollard's Corner? Could you do the same setup in Hepzibah? I would I would do it in Hepzibah. The only thing is where a landfill in Hepzibah is, I don't want to leave that equipment out there. I would rather be able to take my time with it than do it on that site, pick my logs that I want, bring a few at the time, do them, and then bring my, my slats and all back to the landfill and bring some more back. You know. You're going to take all the waste back to Hepzibah? Yes, sir. So the land, so, so you have people bringing their waste to you, the ground. landfill, and so this is something that would, that would continue, and you mentioned that you would be able to do it seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. How long do you think you would be able to run this type of business? Well, my oldest son is going to kind of take charge of doing the cutting because I have my own job. I'm trying to set him up into into something like that, so where we don't waste all this material, and that's what you know what he wants to do. And I think it's a good thing he goes recycling it. And, and as far as I know, that's what everybody wants to do, correct? I mean, why would you want to take a walnut tree and bury it in the dirt when you could make? So you've got eight acres out there that were zoned for storage, boat storage. Yes. Sir. Now you're saying that you only want to use two of the eight acres. What would prevent you from Expanding, you know, if things start really going well, you get a lot of demand. Uh, furniture stores start calling, and, and all of a sudden, well, you, I, I, you need to expand outside of that two acres. What I guess if you? it would come to the point where I would want to expand, I would probably have to do this again and see if I could get some more acreage to it. But I really doubt it's going to happen. Because the two acres is probably going to be twice what I need. That's so I'm already kind of figuring if it does well, I'll still have plenty of room. Have we had any complaints? How, how loud would you say the install is? My lawnmower has uh, a little bit larger engine than this has. So it sounds like a lawnmower. And not real loud. It, it's probably not as loud as my lawnmower, to be honest with you. <clears throat> So are y'all going to reclaim everything that you're going to saw, or are y'all going to go out and find folks that are having trees cut and and, uh, and well, purchase lumber? I'm I'm really not into trying to purchase lumber because I've got more that comes out there that I buried than I could ever cut. So I mean I can't even cut everything I'm getting out there. I'm just trying to pick the the nicest things. Okay. You know, but there's really no point in me trying to purchase lumber when I've got more than I can. You know, I'm throwing it away. Sure. How big are your, your uh, uh, drying buildings going to be? I'm sorry? How big are your drying buildings going to be? Is everything going to be dried indoors, or are going to have lumber stacked outside drying? No, it's just going to be on this two-acre track. Okay. Now, there's a, there's a market for this wood? I mean... Oh, yeah. So, uh, probably one of my biggest markets is I'm in the construction business, and anyone who's heard through the grapevine that I purchased one of these mills, all I'm getting is constant calls for oak floor, uh, not flooring, but the um, okay. trailer lumber. There's plenty of low board tra equipment Those trailers. But it's got to be rough cut two inches because DOT is can't, rough cut. can't be an inch and a half. But I mean, I, I could cut nothing but oak lumber for low board trailers. That's what I wanted to do. but. I kind of like to get into trying to do some of the table talks and things like that. Market for <clears throat> Gentlemen, any other questions? I love it. Is there is just humor me if I, if I'm asking a question that's already been answered? But the 
the limit to the space used is the two acres, he would have to come back in front of us to expand outside of the two acres. And, and if we Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else would like to speak either for or against this particular uh, S-1 revision? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve and hire the table. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve with conditions file RZ-200303, major S-1 revision. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Mr. Butler, Major PUD revision, tax map 081. request for a major PUD revision, uh, 20, 2010 through 2014 and 2096 through 2110 acre circle. Uh, you're looking at several lots that are 0 0.94 acres and several that are 0 0.76. The request is to reduce the building setbacks for the individual lots. Here's the location of the, of the properties, again, we're on Egret circle. Um, you have the three at the top and then you have the eight at the bottom. Uh, we'll kind of be describing these in two separate sections. Again, it's part, of, it's part of River Island, uh, currently zoned planning and development. Everything around it is zoned the same way. There's aerial view of the sites. Again, it's not been developed yet. The existing site itself is on the, eager, on the north side of Eager Circle. It's on the south side of Eager Circle, looking towards the eight lots you see in front of you there. This is a plan of the property. And the plan of the property, they're the same thing. So the request itself, um, so the three lots at the top, if we go back to the plat, or the plan itself. Three lots at the top here, uh, Q7 through Q6. But the request there is to reduce that to zero to a zero foot setback. Uh, back in 2016, there was a minor revision to uh, lengthen those lots by five feet uh, to provide for the ability to have a uh, to have, have the buildings be in line with the the buildings next door um, that they were not built on at that time. Uh, so they come back before us to request for a zero foot setback now uh, to have this a similar house be built on those lots. Ones at the bottom, uh, you can see there is a large uh, drainage utility easement there. Um, that would be uh, eliminated with this request and also reduce the setback down to zero feet on those eight lots on the bottom. This is the, uh, the proposed house types for this request and they submitted a site plan uh, for the three at the, top of, uh, three, the three at the top of Eager Circle. Again, you can see there you have you know, the one on the right hand side, Q5, uh, meets the five foot setback, the other two don't. You have a porch that goes into that setback. And then these are the elevations. You know, very, very nice looking houses. Uh, they look very similar to the ones that are next door to it. Um, again, everything in River Island is, is usually pretty nice. So in terms of the request, um, one of the issues that, that popped up with this, the three that are already built, um, those are actually built at a zero foot setback. They're not supposed to be. Uh, so that's part of the, the issue here. Uh, so in order for, for the houses to be very similar to those, you really don't have to reduce the, the setback on the three at the top of, uh, on the three at the north, the north side here. You can keep it at five feet, maintain the same look across that streetscape. Um, the other thing too, the uh, if, if we can go back to the aerial view. So you see in front of uh, in front of the houses that are already built, you have a sidewalk. I think I can draw on this. Well, I can. And um, so the sidewalk there would have to jog over to be able to, to meet that the current um, property line. So you're going to have a jogging um, sidewalk no matter what you do. So in terms of that, those three lots, there is a condition that pros is not reducing that setback. On the bottom, on those eight, the eight lots on the bottom of the, of the uh, view here, um, it, it is fine to reduce them there. Uh, the, nothing has been built there. Um, however, it's going to be quite expensive in our opinion to do that. Um, there is a condition that kind of lays out, here's everything you're going to have to do. In order to do that, there is an existing drainage utility easement with pipes in the ground. There's an existing um, painting wall there. Uh, so again, it, it's going to be quite extensive. Uh, so in terms of future land use, again, it's part of River Island. Uh, it was done back in 2002. 
So again, there are portions of it that may not meet the current future land use. Uh, this technically doesn't. Uh, however, it is. It's been approved. He has rights to have this. But again, in our opinion, it does meet the future land use map. So in terms of, of the conditions, we we'll recommend approval with conditions from stormwater. Uh, no parts of no structures or part of structure will be allowed within the existing 20-foot uh, DNU easement. Again, that's to take care of existing one. And again, the uh, rear setback for the lots on the south side can be reduced to zero feet after the following has occurred. Part an engineering site plan, uh, relocate the existing infrastructure, eliminate, eliminating the existing uh, DNU easement, and also having a new DNU easement put in place, also revised plat. And a site will be required along that portion of the green space as well. And also the last condition there is rear setback for 2010, 2012, 2014, just remain at five feet. That includes staff recommendation. Gentlemen, any questions of staff? Is the applicant here? Yes, sir, Mr. Mills, if you'd come forward, give us your name and home address. Certainly. Uh, Matt Mills, 3009 Lake Forest Drive, Augusta, Georgia. Um, we really don't have any problem with any of the conditions except for the last one. The last one um, restricts our ability to go to a zero setback on those three lots. I guess our reasoning for this is um, several reasons. First and foremost, the only person affected is the Homeowners Association's park behind it, which um, we own, we control. Um, it also, I think it does a disservice to the residents and the other townhomes because if we were, we need to have porches to stay consistent. Those porches are the only things sticking out into that five foot setback. And there's only two of them. And I think the reality is if we have to shrink the footprint, the units will get smaller. The, house, the cost of those houses will be less. And therefore, people that own the existing townhomes, which are expensive townhomes, there'll be comparables out there at a lesser price point, which is gonna be a disservice to their property value. Since we're the only ones really being affected by this, um, we respectfully ask for your approval. And then we'd like to solve another problem when we jog the sidewalk. There's been an area right behind the existing townhomes that over time the beds have built up and they're holding water and um, we would like to uh, get our builder there to fix that drainage issue. But when we could we go to the overhead that shows the sidewalks in the back? So there's a there's a spot right that, right there that um, is holding water, and I think when we if we redo it and are able to jog it, we will be able to take care of that water issue for residents there. We'd plan to do it when we did this, but. This has been on, ongoing, and frankly, when we rezoned this two or three years ago, we all missed it. But the, there was a block there that had a five-foot setback. We meant to take care of this last time. We didn't, so here we are again. All right. Well, Any um, questions? I'll do it. I can't foresee any. I, I think I might answer that question for me. Okay. So currently, you have this whole section here is in a line. So if you put them at five, if you put them at zero feet, you're going to have them. They're going to be in front of the, this lot. These lots over here are going to be in front of it. Not as exaggerated as that is, uh, but they'll be in front. Uh, if you're looking down that green space, you'll see these houses all of a sudden jut out. So again, sure, could it be an, an aesthetic issue? It could, um, but again, it's to make it so that. You know, per, per the stated, uh, per, per the stated um, comments from the the, uh, the applicant, it was to maintain a very similar look there. That's what, that's what that condition does. Um, so it's really up to you to decide if that's uh, worth it or not. So. It's about six of one and a half dozen of the other then. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. All right. That's been putting it that way. Okay. This is a public hearing. Is anyone here that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. Oh, it's up here. Oh, okay. As long as you do. I'm Bill Knoll. I live at 206 Egret Circle in Evans, and I'm speaking for the four town home owners that are currently built there. Uh, okay, this is an overhead 
Uh, yeah, basically, I request we request that you disapprove this. If the setbacks approve, the new home uh, townhomes will be five feet further out than the present and will look somewhat bad. They're going to have to remove about four four good sized trees that were planted probably in 2007. Uh, the new sidewalk will, will uh, as they have been said, will jut out from where it currently is. And uh, as far as I'm concerned and we're concerned by putting those houses and moving them further out, they're going to increase the drainage problem. And let me show you some of that. This is Egret Circle as, as it goes around there. The top part there is where the three uh, new townhomes that would have a setback of an additional five feet. Uh, if you take a look at uh, that right there, you'll see those four trees there. Those trees would have to be cut down because the, uh, uh, the uh, sidewalk would, would jut out there. Now, if you look over to the left side, you'll see part of the same open space that, go, that goes down the hill there, you'll see four homes on one side and three on the other. They're all uniform in the way they, their setback is, and basically you've got the uh, sidewalks are all uniform all the way down. So what we're asking, the developer's asking here is he wants to move the sidewalk for the, for the last three of them, and frankly, I think it would, it would look bad. Uh, the other parts down below, but if you look, when I bought that, no, go ahead to the next slide. When I purchased that, I asked the developer, what were those other three townhomes going to look like? He gave me 12 drawings that had the same, if you look, that says 112 feet, which is what it is without the, with, with the setback in there. And this is what he told me that he was going to have uh, and that was uh, that drawing was dated uh, April April 2016, and it was a 12 pages. Pretty was pretty detailed. So the way I looked at that is he these townhomes were going to be the the same distance as the one that that we're in and the first four that are there. Next slide, please. This is what it looks like when you're looking down at those. Uh, those four townhomes now, we've got a nice clean cut and there's porches on all of them, but they are also have the sidewalk is going there at 117 feet. Next slide, please. This is what it looks like looking down. This is the water problem he talked about. As far as I can tell, if they take and jut those out any further, that those other three lots, are, are about a foot, foot and a half higher than where they are now. And if you jut them out a little further, I see our water problem getting worse and not better, plus the fact they'll take those trees down there uh, at the same time. Uh, next slide, please. This is the other side. I don't know a lot about that. He hasn't, the developer hasn't said a lot about that. But in August of 2016, there was a... Uh, PUD 160705, and basically one of the requirements there is that no part of the structure can be, I can't read my own writing, within the 20-foot drain and utility easement. Well, that drain and utility easement's on the other side of that wall there. So what's going to happen here is they're going to take out all those trees and take out that wall, and I did not find anything in their submission that said what they were going to do about that. So basically, the, for the homeowners uh, that are currently there, we recommend you disapprove the whole thing. Any questions? Yes, sir. I want to make sure you want us to disapprove the building of the three. I, I, to or, make or them just, five feet or the further, five, right. Five feet. The total distance with any uh, uh, porches should stay the same of 112 feet. Which is what we were just talking about as the last condition. Is that correct? Yeah, that was the last condition on there. Any other questions? But if I understand it correctly, the, the five feet difference would basically be the only difference. The sidewalk wouldn't be dead straight. 
and those trees. Well, the sidewalk made. wouldn't be straight, and then we'd have, uh, at least from the first two there, we'd have a, a somewhat of a vision problem as well, because it, the others would be jutting out there another five feet. And if you look what y'all approved down the, down the way there, all of them on both sides, all eight of those uh, homes they put in there, all of them had the same setback. So I see no reason to move the setback for three additional ones right now. Any other questions, gentlemen? All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak either for or against? Okay, Matt, Mr. Mills, would you like to come back up and, and uh, rebut? Um, yeah, I don't even know if Mr. Knowles realizes, but we can take care of the water issue. There's a 20, there's a 18 inch pipe out storm box into and get rid of the water that way. So the difference in elevation of the pads wherever they end up wouldn't be an issue. As far as the trees go, we can spade trees bigger than what's there. I mean, they plant them all the time. I mean, we have a bigger investment in River Island than anybody. Everything that he's showing that's nice there, we created. We want to keep it nice. We're talking about little porches that jut out a little bit to keep it consistent. I don't want to make the unit smaller because I don't want to hurt the value of the houses next door. So we, I, we think it's reasonable and wish we hadn't missed it last time around. I still just don't understand where the five feet is that big a difference. Somebody enlighten me, please. What does that five foot do to the square total square footage? Well, if you want to keep porches on those units, then you'd have to push it feet. back. And those porches, one of them only sticks out like three feet, and one of them, one of them doesn't stick out at all, and one of them sticks out the five feet. Really, I mean, really only have this porch, which won't completely block a view. I have plenty of land planners that tell me your view is more interesting when you're looking to have something in the view. These numbers 30, 35, that, is that the width? The width, yeah, and that was the whole to, to create a good townhome unit, you have natural light by making the units deeper, you're allowed to open up these, these courtyards, you have a much nicer unit because it lets natural light into the unit. So we really think these are good plans and they'll help develop this section which has been sitting idle for three years. And, and, and this is the drawing of the proposed three that we're talking about? This. Yes, sir. And we haven't figured out the so other So the side. only porch that's really affected here is this, the one in, in the this center? Side. Is that right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about porches on the ground level or the second floor. The front porch. Thing. Remember, <laughs> it's a two-story. It's on both. We're talking about 175 square feet, though, internally. Does that have? Does that? Does that? A we might be able to modify the porch to make it shallower. You usually want to have a comfortable place to put rocking chairs and start really getting them tight. But again, I think we can solve the tree issues. We can solve the drainage issues with no problem whatsoever. I think I think the only um, thing that Mr. Knowles is concerned about would be the view corridor, and um, it's a wide park. It's like seventy something feet wide. I mean, you're talking about five feet. These would be better units. They will sell for a higher price, which should help maintain the value of Mr. Knowles' home. Okay. I think Mr. Knowles is frustrated that the water issue has not been fixed. The builders created that when they built the unit. The builder that built those has passed away. Darren built those. All right, We're going to solve it with this one. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Expense. Thank you. Yes, sir. This will be the last thing. Uh, basically, the current townhomes that are there, they vary from 31 Hundred square feet down to about 2,500 square feet. That is frankly larger than some of the houses around Egret Circle. So the other, and ours all have front porches. Mine is sort of, sort of narrow, but it doesn't bother me. But yeah, we'd like to see everything stay aesthetically the same. And what he's doing now, trying to do is move everything out and give us something that Going to start looking different, and y'all approve for the houses down below there, and the same thing. 
straight sidewalks all along. So I think if he's going to try to do anything better, more square footage than 3,100 for a townhome, I don't see where that's going to sell that much. So I, I would appreciate it, and the four of us that already live there would appreciate it if you would disapprove this change in aesthetics okay. of this. All right, thank, thank you, sir. All right, and with that, I'm going to close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on RZ 20-3-4 to approve it without the five-foot setback. I'm still not, nobody's convinced me why that makes a big difference. Okay, so you want to remove condition three? Yes, sir. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 4-1. Okay, we're uh, at file, are we at RZ200305? That is correct. This is a request for rezoning from R1 to R2 off Mullican Road. Uh, the applicant has requested to withdraw this application. Uh, staff is recommending to accept that, with that withdrawal without prejudice. We can go through it really quick if, if we want to, or we I, can. I think we should for the record. Need. So this is the location of the property on Mullican Road. Uh, so the zoning of the property is currently R1. You have some R3 around it and also some R3, R, R1A, excuse me. And across the street, some R1 and R, R2 and R3. Aerial view of the site, again, undeveloped. The existing site, the plat of the property, uh, as track C on that, on that plat. Uh, this is a sketch of the overall site itself. Um, again, we were recommending approval with a couple of conditions. Future land use side of things is well within the one to four dwelling units per acre. Uh, it would have met the future land use map uh, if we're looking at if, if, we're, if we were looking at the rezoning. Again, the applicant has requests to withdraw the application. Staff recommends approval of the request to withdraw without prejudice. All right, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against this particular uh, rezoning? Yes, sir. If you'd come forward and give us your name and home address. Bill Jeffrey, 912 Riverbound Court. Um, one question I have about this, if you see up there now where it says R1 single family residence to R2 single family residence, is there a difference between those two rating uh, zonings? Yes, sir. Which one of the staff would like to address the difference in the... the... So they're both single family they, residents? They are both single family residential districts. Uh, R1 is about one acre lots and R2 is about quarter acre lots. Okay. Well, we live in that area, and we're just concerned. We don't know what the withdrawal represents, so if there's no further... The, the withdrawal without prejudice means that they can come back at any time and, uh, and submit a plan for us to approve, but it would have to be advertised. It wouldn't be something that they would just come in and, and ask arbitrarily to be put on an agenda with a day's notice. And uh, from what I understand, the, uh, the, the developer had another project come up and wanted to, to concentrate on that as opposed to buying the property and develop that. So that's the reason that he decided to withdraw. But I think the, the, the property owner still has the property for sale. Well, we so. feel that there's probably intentions to carry that forward even at a future, future date. Um, but in terms of talking to some of the residents in that area, we all feel pretty similar in the sense that, that uh, that's a main thoroughfare going to a residential section in the back area, but uh, in the back, uh, Hunter's Cove in the very back, back in here, and we live over here. This road carries a lot of traffic through here. There's two schools up here. There's a school, um, trying to see about where it is roughly, but anyway, there's a school up here and there's another school over here, Riverside. That's a lot of traffic and a lot of kids and there's sidewalks. Actually, some years back, we even had a lady who was, uh, who was killed because she was walking along the road there before the sidewalks. Right. And uh, so I say that to say that we feel that there's going to be so much traffic that's going to increase above what we currently have, even with both schools, that we're, our concerns are that for future development to be disapproved. Right. Thank you, sir. We, we come back. It. We're, we're awesome. on record. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you have a comment? Is it something besides traffic? Okay, then I'm going to ask you to yield the microphone so we can roll on through because we'll note the traffic. If you've got anything else besides traffic, 
Give us your uh, name, just home overpopulating address. the road, the traffic, schools, and okay. stuff like that. Uh, there's a little, just mostly traffic. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. We, uh, one quick question: How many homes were going to be planned to put on that site? Because it never really came up. But y'all had a your name lot of address. Woody Bowles, forty forty one Mullican Road, right next door to that. It looks like what there's about sixty nine homes in there. And I've heard there are some questions as to whether or not the topography would actually allow the yield to be that yeah, high. Yeah, because there's actually with that cul-de-sac on the far left, you know, there's wetlands and uh, springs on that hill. If you actually walk back there, I've lost my dog, so I've mm -hmm. known that land a lot. Um, that there's actually springs that feed that creek. Excuse me, feed that creek. That, like right in here, that all this is wet, constant wet, that feeds that creek to the river. Okay. So, you know, just worried about that. All right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you coming out. Yes, ma'am. Please come forward, give us your name and home address. Hello. Uh, my name is Karen Jeffrey, and I live at 912 Riverbound Court. Um, my husband just spoke a minute ago. Um, my concern is that. We don't want high density housing along this area. It would impact the homes that already exist. It would impact, potentially impact. This is, this is the same zoning as everything else that's there. But density. it's multifamily, correct? It's single so. family. Yeah, the, so no, the R2, R2, is, is, R2 is single family. R2 is basically It quarter. just means you can put more houses per just, amount of land. Ma'am, just, just like the other neighborhoods that are surrounding, uh, uh, before it, at R1, mm -hmm. Neil said, one acre lots. So these would be changed to be similar to the ones that are all around. Not high density, per se. Okay, so it's not townhomes? No, ma'am. No, ma that's not our understanding. Okay. It's just like all the neighbors that are already there. Okay. All right. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention is the way that this is worded. Um, it's wanting to rezone from R1 to R2. And then in the in number five, if you'll read further, it says it's currently zoned R2. That is not correct. We're talking about rezoning from R1 to R2. And then in the next sentence, it says, and currently zoned R2. That would be a uh, staff mistake. Okay, well, that needs to be correct. Okay. <laughs> because it well. could, Page three of four, number five, H2, little i, five. And all I'm saying is that, you know, we just need to get our facts straight. And I, I mean, I'm not, I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to be picky picky, but picky picky no, not at can all. end up changing, changing things. It's not yes, going to be relative, ma'am, because that's not going to happen now. They're going to withdraw Somebody else so. comes along and buys the property, we may go through the same thing. Okay. Well, thank that, you. That will be right. fixed in the final minute. All right. Okay, well, thank you thank very you, much. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you noticing that. Thank you. All right, with that, I'm going to close the public hearing and either have a motion to approve, deny, or to table the request to withdraw. Chairman, I make a motion uh, to request the prejudice. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, motion's been made to uh, approve the withdrawal uh, without prejudice. Been seconded. Uh, all in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Ms. Bolte, file RZ200306. Yes, sir. This is a request for a major revision to the planned unit development at 4275 Owens Road. Um, this is the Brandon Wild um, Life Care Community. It's located on the west side of Washington Road and the north side of Owens Road, and again is currently zoned PUD. This is the aerial of the site, um, contains a, a range of housing options uh, for senior residents. There, uh, this revision is in regards to the sign on Owens Road. Um, this is the street view of the previous sign. Um, this sign is no longer there. It was hit by a car and demolished. Uh, this is their proposed replacement sign. Um, during permitting, uh, the location was noted that it was actually a zero-foot setback from the right-of-way. Um, our sign code does require signs to be set back at least five feet from the right-of-way, as well as meet other visibility requirements. 
Um, this is the, the stakes marking the site of the new sign. Um, they do obviously have a temporary sign up there while they're going through the, the permitting and the, the major revision process here. Um, so you can see roughly where the sign would be in the island again. Uh, the reason for the, the request, um, pushing the sign back five feet puts it on this water line, um, the nice blue line running at an angle through that island there. Um, regardless, obviously the sign is within the utility easement. Um, water utility has said you know, they do need an easement encroachment agreement, but they're okay with the sign being in the easement provided it's not actually on top of the water line. Um, with the angle the water line runs through this island, um, if they meet the five foot setback, they would be on top of the water pipe, that's a problem. Um, the zero foot setback keeps them off of the actual uh, water line. Um, and staff is recommending approval. Gentlemen, any questions? Is the applicant here? Yes, ma'am, would you like to come forward and give us any additional information? Please give us your name and home address. Um, Chris Fine of Freed, Fine of Sign Company, at 426 Park West Drive, Grove Town. I really don't have anything to add. The sign was hit. We're going to put up a more beautiful sign. It's not in anybody's way or a traffic detriment. And I'm just asking for your approval. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve file RZ200306, Major PUD Revision at 4275 Owens Road. Clear second. Second. All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5 0. Thank you, ma'am. All right, uh, the next one is file RZ200401, rezone from R1 to S1. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a request for rezoning uh, at 49, or portions of property, located at 4911 Wrightsboro and 4915 Wrightsboro. Full of 2.83 acres, currently zoned R1 and S1 special. The request is for rezoning to C2 for a proposed convenience store with gas pumps, restaurant, and retail. Property's on the north side of Wrightsboro Road. We can see it here on the aerial view of the map, or aerial view of the, that we have before us. Uh, and you have the zoning itself. The S1 uh, is, cur is currently, it's for a uh, at outdoor entertainment center uh, and a thrift store. Uh, the R1 is obviously residential. Uh, so the north you have M2, which is uh, general industrial. The, the large building you see at the top there is the Hoback building, uh, it's over half a million square feet. Then you have R1 to the uh, east and west and across the street to the, to the south is Breeder Landing, so an R2. Area view of the site, again, it's currently undeveloped on the left-hand side, right-hand side does have an existing house. Uh, one of the things that's a little unique, when you go back to, the, to that picture there, uh, there is currently a road being built, which is right through here. An extension of Gateway Boulevard uh, is not on the aerial view. Um, that's going to be part of uh, the, the discussion we're going to have here in a moment. Property. This, the existing site, again, 4911 Wrightsboro is the existing house. And you do have 4915 currently undeveloped. The plot of the property. So the request is again for a gas station. You see the concept here on a portion of the property. A uh, fairly standard gas station setup. You have the the gas station itself, it does have uh, two additional units in it for a restaurant and a retail uh, business. Uh, it does meet um, our, uh, the size requirements there under C2. Uh, you have the, gas, the um, gas pumps out front, and then to the, uh, to the east you have a detention pond. Uh, one of the things with this, we'll be kind of going through some variances here in a moment. Uh, they're keeping the two properties to the north, you see there, where it says remaining parcel, so S1 and R1. Uh, there is a possibility, a very high likelihood, they'll be redeveloping this property to the north for commercial or industrial development. However, at this time, they don't know which it's going to be, um, so they're not resenting those portions. They have ever given us a future development, a potential future development there to kind of give us an idea of how this is going to flow together. Kind of gives us a basis for the, the variance, variance we'll be hearing in a moment. So in terms of, of future land use, um, this area you can see is in the neighborhood's area. Uh, you wouldn't normally see a gas station here. However, one of the things in our, in our code, it does talk about changing conditions. So what you have now is you have a collector road coming into the north, and you have Riceboro Road coming to the, in on the south side, which is an arterial road. Uh, that basically opens up this entire area here to, to kind of change over to industrial or commercial development. You already have these two parcels here as industrial. Um, they're already, uh, actually should be currently under, underway for um, some um, ancillary businesses to John Deere. You have John Deere here on both sides of the road. And again, the Hoback building 
uh, to the north. So again, this area will have increased pressure as you turn over to commercial industrial development. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about with the variances kind of deals with issues with that, what can happen when, when that occurs. I will be going into that here in a moment. Uh, in terms of the request, are the staff is recommending approval of the request. I include staff recommendation. I got one question on the uh, the substation. Yeah. Will that create any uh, building issues on the on the property to the uh, to the opposite side? The building issues on the opposite side. Yeah. Or uh, any building issues on on the second lot up here where they're looking at commercial. Is it, I know they're not going to be able to build under high tension yeah. wires or anything like that. So. I mean, that's really all you, all you have. You also have an AT&T. Um, if you can go to, let's see, is that on the plat or the concept? You have an AT&T easement that goes across here as well. So you do have a few, few, uh, few issues with it. Um, again, it's, it's shown being outside of the power, the power line easement. See it right here on the concept. Again, the concept is not part of this. This is okay. kind of showing here's what could happen sure. here. Sure. Okay. Gentlemen, any other questions? So the house you showed... Don't, it's, it's 4911, so, okay. Right here. Take. Is the applicant here? Just would you like to come forward and give us any additional information? My name is Michael Wensinger, and I'm at 614 Tailwater Bend in Lexington, South Carolina. Um, standing in for David Harding with Goodwin Mills and Kaywood. Um, I don't think we have anything additional to add. You know, we appreciate staff's coordination on, on working through this um, and your consideration. Questions will be happy to answer. Is this a uh, is this a private entity or is this uh... Uh, Southeastern Realty or, or uh, Real Estate Group um, is represented here as well? Um, okay, I just didn't know who the, the ultimate customer was going to be, who was going to build the, the, and operate the. the it, it would be private, I believe. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Yes, sir. Your name and home address. Jonathan Crawford, 884 Willow Lake, Evans, Georgia, 30809. I'll keep it brief. I'm here representing on behalf of the, um, the owner of the property. The only thing I would add to the notes that Will uh, had gone through, I think that pretty much covers it, but giving the timing and pushing back the planning, um, there is a developer's agreement that's in the process of being approved with the county to help with some of the road improvements making um, this left turn into the site and it's actually going to be a benefit to Brigadier Landing down the way because as part of those improvements we're able to make a tur left turn lane into that subdivision. That was something the developer was going to take on up front but with the rezoning getting pushed back luckily the property owner has stepped in and he's going to help finance those improvements in the meantime so that will be an added benefit to the residents across the street as well as helping add this left turn into the site so just want to add, add that piece Thanks, of sir. Uh, with that, I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve file RZ200401 for the properties at 4911 and 4915 Rossville Road. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Mr. Butler, the companion variance 200403. I think this is a request for variances to uh, section 9 98 list lot structure requirements, 9 139 buffers and screening, 9 147 G10B use provisions, uh, revised building setbacks, buffers, and hours of operation for property located at 4911 and 4915. We've all seen it very recently. Again, this shows property on the north side of Wrightsboro Road. Again, currently zoned S1 and R1. Adjacent properties are a mix of M2 and residential zonings. Aerial view of the site, the existing site. On both at those two locations, the plat of the property and the concept. So with the request, we talked about before, they're not, they're not rezoning the, the northern properties and also the George Power one's not getting rezoned either. So the issue there is that with the rezoning, you now have increased buffers and setbacks against all of those properties. So the, the reduction in the, in the um, building setback is reduced down to three feet against both the northern and the western property. So again, it functions more like it's a C2, C2 uh, development. Same thing with the buffer, it would be a 30-foot structural, reduce that down to no buffer at all along the property. Uh, the last one is a request for a, a, basically a waiver of the hours of operation. Uh, currently our code requires a convenience store can only be open from 11 
p.m. or can has, has closed at 11 p.m. and reopened at 6 a.m. Uh, this request is for that to be waived and it can be a 24-hour uh, convenience store. The issue there is, of course, going to be noise and, and lights. Uh, one of the things that we kind of see this as, uh, is this area before, we talked about how it's, it's going to convert into being more industrial and commercial uses. Uh, the industrial uses can operate 24-7. There's a possibility of people leaving those, again, needing to have gas stations in that nearby. So again, it does make sense to kind of ha to have that ability uh, here. You also have is on Arturo Road, on Wrightsboro Road itself, then you have the Gateway Boulevard as, an, as a, a collector coming in on the other side. So again, it's a high traffic area. However, again, the lights and sound, uh, we do have a condition uh, regarding all light on the site will be shielded in a direct way from nearby residential property. We'll require a photometric plan to be to show us how it's going to work and showing that it's you know, not necessarily leaving the site. Uh, you've probably seen, uh, for instance, one on Furious Ferry, uh, the gas station there right outside of Westlake. In the evenings, it's, um, it's lit up, but it does not really get out into the road. That's one that we can kind of look to as a model. Uh, in terms of the buffer requirements, uh, we're not waiving the buffer requirements for dumpsters, ground level mechanical, heating and air conditioning equipment, outdoor electrical, you know, any kind of you know, visual um, issues that we have with the building itself are not being waived with this request. And that includes staff recommendation for the variance. Gentlemen, any questions to staff? You all have anything you'd like to add as part of the public hearing? All right. Then I'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve deny or to table. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve with conditions file VA 200403 to reduce the setbacks and buffers and increase hours of operation at 4911 and 4915 Rossborough Road. Okay. With conditions? With conditions. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. And with that, we'd ask you all to, to exit out the side here, and we're going to make room for the next group. And gentlemen, I would suggest taking a, uh, a pause that refreshes yes. to get ready for you the next You want me to time it? Yeah. I think so. Get held up. We'll be, we're going pretty 